Hi, my name is Alexander Ugla and I have made Birch, the healing game. Healing is a concept with deep roots in the RPG genre. Starting all the way back with Dungeons and Dragons, RPG games have had a holy trinity of damage dealers, tanks and healers. The damage dealers kill enemies, the tanks soak up the damage from the enemies and the healers heal the damage that the party takes. Many people might see the damage dealing and defeating of monsters as the interesting part, but some people prefer the gameplay of a healer. There are a handful of games that have isolated the healing gameplay and have single player healing experiences. Two of those are Mini Healer and Little Healer. And my game Birch is my take on this genre. At the start of this course, I already had a small prototype of a healing game that I had built. It had two teams that dealt damage to each other and a few player abilities that could heal, but not much more. For the game I had a few design goals in mind. Firstly, I wanted to give the player a feeling of mastery. Knowing how fights, enemies and abilities worked should feel rewarding. Secondly, I wanted choices to have an impact. Using different abilities should feel different and create different outcomes, rather than just being different flavors of the same thing. Finally, I wanted sequencing and timing uh, to feel rewarding and fun. Building muscle memory, memory with real-time components and building an internal understanding of timing should feel rewarding and fun. I also had some things that I didn't want in a game. Firstly, I did not want aiming. Aiming can be fun in games, but in this game it would drag away the focus from the decisions and the sequencing of healing. Secondly, I did not want the player to be able to deal damage to enemies. I wanted to create a focused experience and have damage dealing would dilute the gameplay. So a few months went and out came Birch. The gameplay and its features can be seen in the trailer or simply by playing the game. Links in the description. Birch is a single player healing game with four different enemies, six player abilities, eight levels with one tutorial, a world map with level selection and a loadout system where the player can choose which abilities to take into each encounter. I coded the game in Godot Game Engine, all the art in the game was created by me, and the audio and music was created by me using existing synths and some public domain sound effects. But how did I get here? Well, for Birch I used a number of design pillars, which I will now go through. Firstly, we have tools. A tool is something that solves a problem, either in its entirely or partially. Having different tools that solve different problems creates purpose tools. When you encounter a problem, you use the tool that has been designed for the purpose of solving that problem. An example of this is that a spanner screws nuts and a hammer nails nails. They have different purposes but are still useful and are useful in very different aspects. However, having multiple tools that address the same problem but are different in a number of relevant axes create relational tools. Relational tools works differently well in different situations. An example of a relational tool is a gun and a grenade in a shooter game. Both the gun and the grenade deal damage, but the grenade also deals damage to more targets at the same time, while the gun can be used more times than the grenade. Having relational tools is more interesting than just having one tool for a problem, because the player does not just have to think about solving a problem, but also in what way it is solved the best. So let's see an example of how I have used tools, and in particular relational tools, in Birch. Here we have three different abilities, Regenesis, Lesser Heal and Greater Heal. All these abilities do basically the same thing, they heal a single target. But they have slightly different properties. Some of these properties are speed, which is how long it takes from when the player presses the ability button to when the heal occurs. Heal amount, which is how much healing the ability does when it fires off, and mana efficiency, which is how much healing the ability does in relation to its mana cost. These three abilities thus are relational tools. Now why is this interesting? Well, in different situations these abilities will be differently useful. If an ally is just about to drop to zero health, high speed is greatly valued because a slower ability will not be able to heal them in time, thus regenesis would be a good choice. If no ally is at risk of dying, 
high mana efficiency is greatly valued. Because of that, because that will ensure that you have enough mana to use later. Thus, a greater heal would fit nicely. However, if a target only has taken a bit of damage, using a greater heal would heal for more than necessary, and thus a lesser heal would work better. There are also other aspects to consider. Regenesis has a cooldown, unless the heal is the only ability that can be cast if you have less than 200 mana, and sometimes you want to use something else than a single target heal. This all creates a complex but understandable decision web that the player can explore, learn, and master. Using the different abilities have diff uh, creates different impacts on the game state that can be felt by the player. This all creates a compelling and satisfying gameplay. When it comes to purpose tools, I came to the realization that they are not that interesting in Birch. In Birch, some enemies apply poison that deal damage over time. I had planned to introduce a poison cleanse that would remove the effect, but I decided against it. The poison cleanse would always be the correct option to use if a target was poisoned, which would go against the goal of creating a complex decision web, so it didn't feel right or fun in this game. Another design pillar that I had was synergies. A synergy is an ability that makes one or more tools work better. Synergies are often about maximizing and optimizing the effect of tools. The fun of synergies come from finding and capitalizing on synergistic effects, and the joy of synergies is similar to that of exploration and creativity. I divide synergies into direct and indirect synergies. A direct synergy is something that actively makes a tool work better. For example, a bellow then makes a fire burn more. The bellow doesn't do anything without the fire, and has to be used directly with the fire to create synergy. An indirect synergy could be a washing machine. The washing machine cleans clothes and frees up time that you have, would have had to spend washing the clothes by hand. This creates an indirect synergy between the washing machine and other household activities, where you can do more if you wash your clothes and do other things at the same time. In Verge, one direct synergy direct synergy is that of growth and flowering. Growth applies an aura to a target that heals them over 10 seconds, while flowering heals all targets affected by growth efficiently and relatively quickly. This synergy is a bit on the nose, so there is not that much discovery in the, in the synergy itself. There is, however, a joy in trying to execute the synergy to maximize the effect, to get growth out on all allies and then spam flowering a few times to create a huge healing effect. Learning the patterns, the execution, and when to use it is the fun part. For the indirect synergies in Birch, we look at two abilities that we have already talked about, Lesser Heal and Growth. If you only have Lesser Heal, the only thing you could do would be to spam Lesser Heal to heal as quickly as possible. If you only had Growth, you would have to apply it to the target and then wait until you had to apply it again. Having both of the abilities, you could apply growth and then use lesser heal until you have to apply growth again. Being able to use both abilities allow you to better use your time and increase your healing output, thus creating an indirect synergy. Another design pillar is predictable randomness. Predictability and randomness are both very important in games. Predictability allows the player to plan their actions and figuring out patterns is one of those classic things that makes our brains go nuts with excitement. However, having too much predictability can damage the game feel. Randomness means that the player has to account for multiple possible futures, which makes the predictions more complex and interesting to solve. It also creates a more organic feel to the gameplay. Things in nature are, are not often that static or punctual, punctual and it creates more experiences for the player to enjoy by the nature of combinatorics. One place I used predictable randomness in Birch was in the unit's cast times. Each cast uh, is randomly adjusted to be anything between 20% slower to 20% faster. The player can roughly predict when a cast will go off, but the randomness spreads out the ability this nicely and makes the units feel rest less robotic. Another place that I use it is for unit targeting. 
And we have some examples here. Uh, firstly, poison blob of the corruptor alligator. The blob hits a random ally, but the player can see which ally it will hit before the impact of the ability, and the poison deals damage over time. The player can thus predict when the ally will take damage, but there is still randomness that spices up the gameplay. The purple rabbit also attacks random allies, but only attack the two that are closest to it. This allows the player to predict which allies that will take the most that are most likely to take incoming damage, but they won't know which exact one. Both of these effects create an environment where the player is able to plan, but still need to be alert and think about what happens on the battlefield. The final design pillar I'd like to talk about is ramping complexity and difficulty. One way in which this is used is with ability unlocks. New abilities are unlocked roughly every other encounter. This gives the player the time to read, digest and use an ability before a new one is introduced. If too much information is put on the player at once, they will get overwhelmed, which in turn makes the player feel anxiety, makes them feel understand less of the game and possibly makes them want to quit the game. Another way in which ramping complexity and difficulty is used is in the enemy selection of each level. The first three levels have only one type of enemy, the purple rabbit. This allows the player to learn how the healing gameplay works before having to understand different types of enemies. When a new type is introduced, the player gets to uh, gets at least two levels to get used to it before a new one is introduced. As the player progresses through the levels, the healing demand and complexity of the fight increases, which allows the player uh, to have time to get used to their abilities before having to optimize the usage of them. So I have created a game and with some pretty good design pillars behind them, but there are still some problems with the design, in my opinion. Uh, first of all, fights tend to peter out. Once a few of the enemies have been killed, the threat to your allies is significantly reduced, and in the final 10 to 15 seconds, you can practically lift your hand, hands off the keyboard and still win if you're in a good position. This could be a good thing, since it can feel rewarding to be able to put yourself in that non-threatening situation, so I don't strictly know if it's good or bad, but it kind of creates uh, situations where there is no gameplay, really. Secondly, we have the problem with few or samey unit abilities. Each unit basically only has one ability. This makes the fight feel, fights feel a bit samey as the units don't change anything during the fights, making it a bit boring. Thirdly, we have the fact that you can't increase the game's speed with player skill. The only way to make the game go fast is to not let any ally die. This can make it feel unrewarding to play with a lot of skill since it, since it doesn't have an impact on the overall game state. Finally, we have the narrative. And because it kind of disappears. The tutorial level has some story, but after that there is no further motivation or conclusion to the story. And that can feel a bit unsatisfying for the player. But when all is said and done, were the design goals for Birch achieved? According to me, yes. I do feel like it is possible to build up mastery in the game. The game is a bit short, but you can definitely gain skill in the game and feel rewarded for using it. I also think that player choices have impact, different abilities have different outcomes and affect the game state differently. There is also a lot of sequencing and timing that the player can use and learn, which feels nice. For the future of the game, I feel like the core is in a good place, and what is needed is more content, enemies with several abilities that change over the course of level, and maybe some RPG elements. But that's it for me, thanks for listening.